Notice I've got this extra tool palette here. You may not have that on your screen. If you don't, click on View, Tool Palettes, and make sure there's ticks next to our large tool set. Notice it goes away. View, large tool palette is back. I tend to move smooth it off to the side so it's not blocking any of the view. We've got Susan here. She's important. You can delete her, but I wouldn't choose that at the moment. She gives an idea of how big the things you are drawing, whether they're too big or too small. Now, what dimensions do we use? Let's check to make sure you've set it up on model info under this list on the side here when you go down to units and the format is decimal and the measurements I'm going to use are millimeters so you'll just look units decimal and millimeters and if that's all done we're ready to start going so we're drawing a toy car so a toy should be small and this is why it's good to have the person here to start off with now I'm going to draw a rectangle. So I've clicked on the rectangle key there. It's the same one up here with the same button. I click one click anywhere, drag it out. If you notice down here on the left hand, right hand bottom corner, I have measurements. I start dragging the size I want, and the size I want is 100, 20. And that's it there. It's tiny, but remember it is a toy. So we know that it must be working right. I zoom in, I can see that it's there. And we can see that there is the drawing style. Now it's only 2D, so let's make it 3D, push pull. And I extend it up, and I want to extend it up 20. Now, that is very simply how the push pull works. I'm going to show you a few extra things now. If I had any shape, and by default it starts crawling on the floor, and I want to push pull that to any size. If I move over to here called inferring, so I'm pointing this object, it'll become the same height. If I now grab this guy and push pull him out, I can say I want it the same height as that. If I use my orbit tool to go around the other side, once again I could push pull, choose that face and infer to that one, and it becomes the same size. I can also click and infer by typing in a measurement and we'll go that long. So a push pull can be very useful. Three clicks on that object and then I can set the whole thing and delete it. Now, I actually told you to make this 20, but it should be 40. I want to show you how we can fix things up. I know it's 20. I can click on that face, drag it this way, and type in another 20. And overall the object should be now be 40. Now I need to do some measuring on it. So I'll grab my measuring tape, choose this end line here, drag backwards, so drag backwards a distance of 30, and then from the same point, drag back a distance of 50. From the top or bottom doesn't really matter, drag down a distance of 10. This gives me my measurement where my trench will be cut. To cut that trench, I simply Draw a rectangle, snapping on those two points there, clicking on the face, pushing it till you see the other side, and that deletes the whole lot. Just orbit around and have a look at that. So there is my first part drawn. And now we should draw the cab part that slots into this trench. I can simply click on the push pull and pull it up, that becomes one solid object. If I tap on the option key and do it up, you can see that it's two separate objects. The distance up that I want to go is 50 millimeters. Okay. Simply like that, and there are two separate objects there. I can actually get rid of my edit. To the guides. So there is the start of my little toy truck that I'm making. I want to make the bonnet section now. Now I want to have a five millimeter bumper bar on it. It's the easiest way to do that. Let's go to measuring. Go back five. Enter done. Don't need to draw a whole rectangle. I can just click on that point and that point there. 
And now I can simply push pull this one up. This looks again 20 millimeters. Once again, I would have liked to have this separate because it's how it's made. So let me control Z to undo that. When I start push pulling, tap the option key and I can push pull. Make sure it's typing when you're typing, make sure you can see the numbers at the bottom. And there is my basic truck form so far. Now, we're going to pretty that up later on, but for now that'll do. Let me delete the guides, because I don't want them anymore. But I'm going to do something special here. Choose my arrow key, triple click and see it's all one object. I'm going to go and edit. I'm going to make that a group. But before I do that, to show you later on what would happen if I didn't, I'm going to choose the move command. It's strange. Move the object over here. But when I press the option key, you notice I've made a copy of it. And that's really the one that I mess up. So triple click on this, edit, and make it a group. You see a box go around the whole object. This one is not a group. This one's a group. You see the difference? The box appears around the whole thing. Okay, if we've got that, that's fantastic. What I'd like to do is draw the wheels on it. Once again, I'm going to go to the measuring tape. Click there, and I want to go up 10 so it's in the middle. I'm going to click on this line here, come across 25. Same from the back, go from there, come in 25, and that's where my wheels will be. Quite simply, I can draw my wheel by clicking on that face and going out 20 millimeters. There's my circle. Don't worry, it looks a bit strange at the moment. I click on that, and I also want it to be 20 millimeters, kind of like that. Now that worked okay. Put the wheel where I wanted it to be. But if we forgot to do that grouping section, we went it into a group. Let's see what happens. So remember, let's have a look at the difference. Click one click on that one, the box will around it. One click on this one, it does not, it's not grouped. Well, I should follow the exact same procedure. Line goes up 10, line goes in 25, line goes in 25, no difference. Choose my circle, click here, now I go to 20. It looks a little bit different this time. If I do to my push pull, whoa, that's the wrong bit there. Stab out of there. You notice that I can't get the whole wheel, it's all sliced up into different parts. When it's grouped, you can still use it to draw bits, but they don't interfere with each other. So now that separate wheel works for me, whereas here it didn't. Let me just delete all that, edit. To look at the guides, come back over and have a look at this one. I'm going to do something slightly different this time. I'm going to triple click that. Three clicks means I've got the whole object. I'm not going to group this one, I'm going to do a different one. Make this one a component. What I'm going to call it wheel, create it. Now there's something quite unique here about a component. Obviously, I want four wheels. So I'm going to do two at the moment. Use my move command like we saw before, click here, start the move, tap the option key, you can see I've made a copy, move to roughly the right spot, don't care too much about that in a moment, let's have a look at it. Now I've got two wheels, you can put the other two wheels on in a moment, but let me show you some edits. As I said, this isn't very neat, I'd like to actually have a rounded bonnet, so I want to do that. First mistake I could make, I could choose the center of that one, come up like that. There's my little rounded section, and you notice that I can't push pull that. Let me undo that. Let me show you why. In order to edit a group, click on it to select it, and then double click it. Notice everything else is kind of grayed out. 
Now when I draw on the object again, midpoint up there, come across, choose that curve, I can very simply push pull that all the way like that. You can see, oops, I've deleted part of that inside there, but you can see the idea I'm curving that object there. Let me undo that for a moment. In fact, you want to go a bit more fancy. I'm going to use the curving tool to create two parts like that. We use this new tool called the offset tool to create a little bit like that. I will push pull this out a tiny bit and it's out of there and you can see create a little front part to my car there. You can create whatever you want. But here's the difference. These two are components which are different. One click gets in the box like that, and a double click, use the offset tool to create my tire section. You can see what's happening to the other one, offsets any sort of drawing on this tire is immediately reflected on that one. So whatever I do to my wheel at this point, every single wheel end up the same. If I want to add some colour to it, I would recommend when you are adding colour to a tyre, don't choose a black for tyre because it doesn't look as good. Choose a lot lightish grey to the colours and just choose red for the sections there. So there's my little truck being created there. Now it's only a basic little toy and what you can do is spend some time to try and put some designs on to make it a bit more truck like. But your task for today is to try and create this basic truck with four wheels and the three parts that make it up.